I would like to um, discuss six project management skills for 2007. Software sizing, software cost estimating, schedule planning, tracking and measurement, software quality control, and software change control. These are topics that every project manager really needs to understand. <clears throat> and unfortunately, you sometimes have to learn these methods from on-the-job training rather than from uh, learning them in a college or a university. Because sorry to say, many colleges and universities don't teach these topics um, as part of their management or software engineering curriculum. I have just lost the screen of my PowerPoint presentations. So, Michael, if you are attending, I need to go to the next screen. Okay. We are on slide five, software sizing. We are on slide five, uh, software sizing. Unfortunately, on this computer, when I push the mouse button, I was given a web go to webinar screen um, that is asking me to launch the presentation. Let's see. Well, I'll I'll, uh, I'll move the slides for you, Capers. We'll just uh, why don't we use the hard Let copy? Let me try again. Okay, I am now on screen five, and uh, the first of these topics is software sizing, which is really the first step to accurate cost and schedule estimates. The key deliverables that must be sized include paper documents requirements, specifications, and about 50 others, source code. And because we have 600 programming languages in existence, and many applications use at least two, some use as many as a dozen, sizing source code is rather tricky. We also have test cases for at least a dozen different kinds of testing. And we have defects that need to be sized and predicted, including uh, requirements, design, coding, and uh, documentation defects is in a special category called bad fixes. And then we also need to size the uh, rate at which requirements change and grow during the development cycle, which turns out to be about 2% per calendar month. Now, there are a number of methods for doing this, but I think that function point metrics is probably the most common and in some ways the most successful today, primarily because it can be used for everything, paper, source code, test cases, and defect volume. The older line of code metric can be used, of course, for um, code, but it can't be used for any of the others. And the uh, sizing chronology starts with initial requirements. Uh, the next slide, please, slide six. Software cost estimating is a required skill for successful management. Um, the major issues for accurate software cost estimates are, of course, the sizes, which we just discussed, the rate of requirements, the defect potentials, quality constraints, especially if this is a contract application that's being built, there may be specific quality requirements in the application itself. <clears throat> Schedule constraints, which are often set by either top management or by the clients. Cost constraints, once again set by uh, clients or by top management. Staffing constraints and team experience. And here, the most effective methods are automated estimating tools for bigger projects. Manual methods work okay for smaller projects. Um, and historical data. And I must say that the, the safest um, thing that you can possibly do is to have a large volume of historical data. Because one of the problems we face with estimating is that either clients or senior managements overthrow your um, estimates and replace them with arbitrary numbers, but they really won't overthrow and replace historical data because that's much more difficult to deal with. Slide seven, please. Now, for schedule planning, um, most of the projects that I've looked at over the years have had one common problem. The schedule plans tend to be excessively optimistic. Sometimes they're not optimistic because the project manager or the developers make them optimistic. They're optimistic because the clients or senior management um, reject a reasonable schedule and begin to force um, progressively shorter schedules on the development team whether they're achievable or not. Now, the major issues that have to be dealt with for dealing with schedule estimates include the rate of requirements change, the change control methods that are used, whether you have, for example, a change control board, um, the staff availability during the project, defect removal methods used, because 
the reason that most projects run slow is because they have so many bugs that um, it, it stretches out the testing cycle. Uh, available historical data from similar projects, and then the use of modern tools such as work breakdown structures, especially automated ones using Microsoft Project or Artemis or some of the more powerful project management tools. And it's also tricky if you have subcontractors. And some modern applications may have as many as four or five subcontractors, and so you have to factor in their schedules too. But the most effective scheduling method today are the project management tools, which start at the low end with Microsoft Project and then run up to the more powerful ones, such as Artemis, that can deal with thousands of activities and nodes. <clears throat> and the um, scheduling chronology is at each phase or monthly or whenever there's any dramatic change in the <clears throat> rest of the application. Uh, slide eight, please. One of the things that are interesting about function point metrics <clears throat> is that they lend themselves to the production of some uh, rules of thumb that you can use with a pocket calculator, or even if you're head, if you're good with math, but most of us would use a pocket calculator. And the first of these rules of thumbs is that if you know the function point application, the size of, a, of an application and function points, and you raise that to the 0 0.4 power, that will give you a good generalized schedule from the start of requirements until the first day of delivery. Now, for 0 0.4, is a pretty good industry average. But some of the newer methods, such as the agile approaches and extreme programming and some of the object-oriented methods, would use a different value. For example, you may be down as low as the 0.34 power if you're using some of the agile methods. On the other hand, if you are doing really complex kinds of applications, such as system software or defense software, especially defense software, 0.4 may not be enough. You may end up with a number such as uh, 0.42. Um, or even 0 0.44. But in any case, 0 0.4 is a relatively good approximation of a schedule and calendar months from the initial um, day of requirements until delivery. Now, the second one is a predictive power for paper documents. In other words, the requirements, the specifications, the planning documents, the user guides, and some of the many others that have to be dealt with for a project. And here, if you raise function points to the 1.15 power, that will give you a very good approximation of the total pages of documents that have to be produced in the United States. If you are working in Canada, where you have to produce documents in both French and English, or if you are working on a project that's going to be sold in China and Japan and 20 other countries, so you have to do translations, this rule of thumb does not work. But it does work pretty well for sizing paper documents in the United States. Now, the next rule of thumb is um, how many test cases you're likely to use. And if you raise the uh, function point total to the 1.2 power, that will give you a good approximation of the total number of test cases for unit tests, new function tests, regression tests, system tests, all of the internal forms of testing. Obviously, this doesn't include beta test or customer testing, but it is good for the number of tests that will be performed internally. The next one, function points raised to the 0 0.1.25 um, power will give you a rather depressing number, because that's the probable number of bugs or defects that's likely to be encountered over the full development cycle. And one of the reasons that software projects do tend to run out of control and run late is because we have many more defects than were anticipated. And this value of the 1.25 power will at least give you a relatively good prediction of the total number of defects that are going to be faced in the development cycle. The last two are for predicting the staff of applications. If you divide function points by 150, that will give you the approximate number of technical staff. And if you are concerned with maintenance, if you divide function points by about 1,500, that will give you the approximate number of maintainers necessary for the software application for three or four years after development. Here, too, if you're using Agile or some of the other methods, these numbers are not perfect. But they are based on historical data from thousands of projects, and they're a pretty good overall look. 